We need to talk about Fox's new dating show in which one woman dates 15 men not to find a boyfriend or a fiance or even a husband. No, she's trying to find someone to father her children. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Swell Entertainment. I am not sitting here as a judgy 20-something. That's not my goal here. I am sitting here as the child of a messy divorce that involved a three-year-long custody battle. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I started seeing the advertisements for Labor of Love about two weeks ago on Twitter, and when I finally watched the video, I was completely floored because what the fuck am I watching? Christy is the leading lady for the first season of Labor of Love. She's 41 years old. She's a career woman. She spent most of her life focusing on her career. She was married and divorced in her late 30s, and in 2007, she was on Brad Womack's season of The Bachelor. I think that if you made it through the early seasons of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, I think you deserve financial compensation, but that's just me. Christy doesn't have a baby, and that's something that she wants she always thought that that would come later, but after she hit 40, she kind of started believing, oh, my clock is ticking and I need to start thinking more seriously about this. Apparently, Christy was actually looking into other options for having a child when one of her friends saw a casting call for Labor of Love and she decided that that was basically her life. Apparently, the show has been in development for three years and they actually recorded this season early last year in 2019. First episode that aired last night, I did watch it. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I don't love reality TV. I do. You guys know I'm nosy, and reality TV gives me a different glimpse into messy people's lives. I love that. I do watch The Bachelor. I've watched a couple other dating shows when they've popped up here and there. But when I heard about Labor of Love, I had questions. <laughs> For someone comments like, oh, they always mention like kids or if you want kids in these dating shows. Yes, but the wanting kids is usually secondary, you know? First and foremost, a lot of these shows, they're like, I'm trying to find a wife or I'm trying to find a husband. I'm trying to find a life partner. I'm trying to find someone that I can spend the rest of my life with and then eventually have kids with them or not have kids with them. There's usually that type of distinction in there. Usually with these shows, there's an expectation at the end of the season that there was going to be a proposal or possibly an engagement. There's usually some type of expectation for the ending. Um, the expectation for the ending here is that uh, they skip dating and just immediately go to having a kid. Christy herself says in the trailer in the first episode, I wanna have a baby within the year. I think by now with shows like The Bachelor and things like that, you know once you sign up, once you're cast, once you accept that, oh, I'm gonna move into the mansion, we're gonna do this, you know that you really have no control over anything. Portray yourself the best as you possibly can. They're gonna franken bite the fuck out of you and occasionally make you look like a psychopath because that's what they do. There's always that concept of, oh, I could end up with someone I love, Oh, I could get heartbroken. Or I could end up engaged at the end of this. The thing is, though, is that it's really easy to break off an engagement. It's not super easy to break off a child. There's the genuine possibility that there will be a child as a result of this season. The stakes are already higher. As they introduce the guys in the first episode, all of them are making comments like, you know, I'm ready to start a family. I realize that, like, this is something I want. I spend my year working on my career. My brothers and my sisters, they've all had great kids. I want that for myself. I want to find someone that I can start a family with. They all pretty much appear, at least, to be ready to have kids. Also, they're all age appropriate. Like I said, Christy is 41. All the guys pretty much vary in age from, like, 37 to about 45, I think, max. Honestly, I kind of want to high five Christy because they did a great job casting these guys. They're pretty much all super fucking hot. Maybe I just think so because I have this thing where most of my celebrity male crushes are all in their late 30s and I don't know why I think that. I have, don't have a bad relationship with my father. Most of the guys seem to have legitimate careers. Some of them have a little more vague careers but that's standard with these types of shows. I believe these types of shows they can't specifically put what they do or like where they work or even their company name because of like potential legal issues. My one thing though is that I always get suspicious of the guys when there's too many of them that come from LA. There's at least four of the 15 guys that are from LA. That's too high of a percentage. I don't trust it. Like I said, I like watching The Bachelor, and if you like watching The Bachelor, you wanna know more about the behind the scenes elements of The Bachelor, I highly recommend Bachelor Nation by Amy Kaufman. Um, I'm not affiliated with her or anything like that. I just really enjoyed that book. She went and interviewed a bunch of people from the show, both former cast members and things like that. Talked about the casting process and all of that. Reality TV is mostly fake. I'm assuming you know this. Thing is though, is that somehow Labor of Love somehow made me think that Bachelor is underproduced. The production itself is so polished, 
So is Chrissy the entire time. So is uh, Kristen Davis. She's in the show. She's the host and one of the producers. Also the guys when they're being introduced, a couple of them wore hoodies and sweaters to like this outdoor cocktail party where they're gonna be potentially meeting the mother of their children. Oh God, the spike of stress that just went through my body when I said that. It's not uncommon for the contestants on shows like this, especially when you're living in a situation, to go and spend a small fortune on a new wardrobe because you wanna look the best that you possibly can when you're being shown to potentially millions of people on TV. But the guys, it's like what they're wearing is weirdly coordinated and then random pops of color. Again, weirdly produced. They're shooting the show in Georgia in this like duplex mansion style houses at the end of a long road in what looks like the middle of the woods in Georgia. The houses are stunning. Like if it was an Airbnb situation, I would absolutely want to stay there. But also because of the overall setup, it looks like a great place for me to be murdered in. It's a bit unnerving. Instead of a cocktail reception at night, they kind of have like a garden party almost. As the guys come in one by one, you know, we get to see what they look like. They're saying their age, they're saying their careers, why they want kids or why they haven't had kids. They're talking a little bit about themselves. One guy who ends up being super creepy is like, I know that youth is wasted on the young. People that I've heard say that are usually the most boring people. So the guys are there, they start drinking. One of the guys is like making a big deal about like, everyone starts drinking, but I wanna keep my wits about me, so I'm gonna have water. It's like, okay. One of the guys starts making an offhanded comment. I don't know what women's problem is. It's, I know it's always the woman, it's not me. It's like, <laughs> Kristen Davis comes downstairs. Glad you're all here, glad you're all found the bar area. Now it's time for you to meet Christy. And she comes downstairs and they're like, woo, yay, clapping, because Christy here, yay. I've already convinced from episode one, we're gonna not see Christy not looking gorgeous throughout the entire first season. They're just gonna overproduce constantly and so we're never gonna get to see her like with her hair not done or with her makeup not done. None of that, it's always gonna be done up. Keep in mind, this is the cocktail reception. They've just met Christy. She comes downstairs, she starts mingling with some of them. This is around the time that the asides with the men's parents start happening. So as she's talking with these guys, as she's going throughout the episode and talking to the different men one-on-one, -on -one, there will be a moment where they go and show a clip of this man's parents, cousin, sisters, whatever, sitting and talking about like, do we think they're ready for marriage? We'd love for him to have a son. One of the guys who I thought was gonna be much younger, but he's like pretty much the same age. He just kind of has like a younger face from certain angles. Kind of had like that free spirit vibe that she was like, I need to like think on this more. They then show his dad and his cousin. And the dad is like, I don't think he's in much of a rush, enjoying taking it easy and living his life. And then the cousin, is turned to the dad and is like, I think he's ready to be a father. I think he's ready to take that step. The vibe that I got from that scene was like a bitch, don't ruin this for him. I think the cuts to the parents and the families was just an extra layer to this that just makes it almost more like fishbowl-y, if that makes sense. I also wanna know when the asides of the families were filmed because they're not reacting or commenting on what's happening in the episode. They're just commenting on like, oh, I think he's ready to have a kid. At least with episode one, they're not commenting on what's being talked about in the episode or what that guy is saying at that time. It's just weird. So next in the cocktail party, Kristen Davis comes downstairs again. Okay guys, so we're gonna make sure that you're all ready to be fathers. All of these waiters come out and on the trays of the waiters are sample cups and they hand them out to all the guys. And then they bring them to the front yard area and there is a trailer set up for them to all go into their assigned stalls and give a sample. I watched this on TV. It's funny though, because on one side you can clearly tell like they were like, can we include this, can we not? She asked them, so how active you are can play in a part in sperm count. So when was the last time you did something like this? And I'm assuming she made a motion. <laughs> but they pan away and the guys laugh. But anyway, they go in one by one. One of the guys is like, oh, there's my name. Okay, I'm just gonna go and like saddles right on up. While I was watching this, I was like, oh my God, this would be a perfect time to like expose someone. There's always that element of dating shows, especially The Bachelor, where it's like, I don't think they're here for the right reasons. Yeah, the show's televised, but it also doesn't have like a cult following yet. Uh, even Christy herself, who's again the main character, she doesn't have a large following on Instagram or Twitter right now. So I don't think any of these guys were cast because they're gonna get famous from being on this show. The way that you could get someone on here for the wrong reasons potentially is someone who doesn't actually want kids. They have a secret kid that they didn't disclose because as far as I can see, none of these guys have kids at all. Maybe one of these dudes do have kids and we're gonna find that out in a later episode, but we shall see. Is if one of them lied and had actually had a vasectomy or something. But there's no big reveal here. All the guys were able to give a sample. Even the guy 
guy who was completely slosh were able to give samples and then they give, they handled all the results. All of them are like peeking at each other's results. But the winner with 17 million sperm is guy whose name I forgot already. And the prize for this dating show's biological test isn't like a walk with Christy or like, oh, you get the first date with Christy. None of that, no, he gets a trophy that says first place on it. That's it for that part. Like you all have good sperm counts. But my question is, because this is a dating show to find someone to have kids with, why not also include like an STD test in that? Maybe they did the STD test prior to this and they just decided to save this part, you know, for TV. But I mean, they could have done the STD test considering they had the clearly sponsored by a private clinic trailer outside with all the nurses available. I mean, could have done the STD tests. But anyway, the guys and Christy are living next door to each other. So when they get their stuff and they're like, okay, bye, good night. And she's like waving from the balcony. One of the guys like breaks off from the pack and goes and he's like, hey, have a good night. And she's like, oh, good night. That was actually a cute moment. That was smart of him. Like I'm gonna wait until I'm away from the guys to make sure that she sees my face and she remembers me. Because again, there's too many of these guys. And even Christy at one point said like, it's really hard to remember all of their names, which I always respect when they admit that. Because I know on The Bachelor, like what they do during the first and like second row ceremony, Ceremonies is they say the names and then they take a break and they go back and they memorize like three more names and then they go and do it again and that's why the rose ceremonies can occasionally take all night so the next day apparently like a picnic set up outside at one point of the guy's house and they're like playing cornhole and shit and they're like how do we get Christy to get over here should we like sing for her what's a song we all know to get Cindy to come over here and one of the guys is like mm -hmm, Cindy Who's Cindy? I know Christy. This is why I don't know if I'd be able to go on one of these shows. I would absolutely forget someone's name. Christy comes over, but she goes around and she sits down with the guys one-on-one -on -one for not very long. A 10 word interaction with these guys. And then she'll do an aside where she's like, you know, Bradley really seems to be ready to start a family. The interactions alone wouldn't be a big deal, but they kept having her do asides for every single one of the dudes that she talked to. If they hadn't have done that and she just had like shown the interactions in like a montage of like, oh, she's sitting with Bradley. Now she's sitting with Omar. Now she's sitting with Marco. Now she's sitting with, you know, like, if it was that, then it wouldn't be a big deal. Then it's like, okay, we're getting like a little bit of a sense of each of the guys, but each interaction is punctuated with an aside from Christy, where clearly they were like, so what do you think of so-and-so? And she like has to sit there and be like, I think he's like really ready to start a family. I think he's ready to do this. You know, I think I need to talk to him more. I don't know if he's ready to start a family. We're drilling into the fact of like, are they ready to start a family? It's drilling to the fact that like, she doesn't fully know these guys and that's all she's really looking for based on what we're being shown. Now, I'm not saying that Christy isn't probably a great person and doesn't probably want to find love or anything like that. It's not what I'm saying. Somehow within the context of the show, they've managed to kind of make her search for um, someone to spend the rest of her life with to have a child, whether it's within the year or whatever. They managed to take that search and make it look like a very vapid thing. Like if she were saying like, he's super hot and therefore I want him to be with me because he's super hot and that's what I want a partner. It feels like that's what she's saying, but really what she's saying is I wanna find someone that I can have children with and spend my life with. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but in the setup of the show itself, that whole search for itself just seems very vapid and shallow. When I'm sure to her, this is very serious, obviously, because this is someone that she's bringing into her life. A child is often a lifelong commitment, you know? So that, that's like a very serious thing. And I'm not trying to say that she doesn't take this seriously, but the context of the show makes it look like this isn't super serious almost. Like it's a vapid thing to be thinking about or talking about. I don't know where to put this, so I'm probably just gonna put this here. I'm editing right now and I don't think what I've said in this video can be taken this way, but I wanna make it abundantly clear. I am not criticizing single parents or the possibility of Christy ending up as becoming a single parent as a result of this season. In the beginning of the first episode, she says that she is prepared to do this alone if that is the outcome of this season, but she would like to spend her life with someone and go through this experience with someone. And that is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with being a single parent. I'm not criticizing that at all, but I wanted to make that very clear just in case anyone tries to take it as like, oh, what does she mean by this? I'm not criticizing single parents at all. And I'm not like criticizing the possible outcome of this where Christy decides to be a single parent and not end up with any of these people. I wanna make that clear. There is one interaction that I do wanna paint up because like this was made to be like the super serious moment, but it was so lackluster in its conclusion that it just didn't hit the same. She is going around and again talking to all the guys and one of the guys she's talking to, she's asking him questions, trying to find out more about him but he keeps turning it back around onto her, which I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with someone where you realize that they will not share anything about themselves. It's the most disconcerting thing and immediately makes me think, oh, you have someone locked in your basement. Party ends, Christy leaves, 
And then all the guys are like gathered around in the living room. And I can't tell if the guys are wearing the same stuff, but I know Christy changed. Christy didn't even just change. She did her whole hair differently. I'm assuming this is a whole different night, but she's completely dolled up. It's not like with the rose ceremony in The Bachelor, where the bachelor bachelorette is standing in front of the contestants and handing out roses, saying their names one by one. So this is Christy sitting in her living room of the house and Kristen Davis is sitting next to her and she has a tablet. She is able to take their photos on the screen and move them into a box that says, let's keep dating and then leave them in the box if she needs to talk to them. But while she's doing this, the guys are in their living room watching the screen and they can see everything she's doing. So if she puts one name over and then she takes it back, they can see that it's not like she does it and then finalizes it and then they can see it. They can see everything that she's doing, but also they can look out the window and see her sitting on the couch doing it. It's weirdly separated. The psychological torture of that is really weird. So all the guys that make it through, she doesn't seem to see any of them that day, but then she goes and she talks to uh, the guys that she put in the we need to talk or we should talk section and it's like four dudes and she immediately sends one of them home the guy who was doing like the weird back and forth thing with her he was creepy as hell that was the ending it's just he went home there's no like oh what was he hiding why was he doing this none of that we don't have time for that he just gets sent home and he doesn't comment on it they clearly don't ask him about it i don't like missed opportunities anyway so two people went home the first night also at the end of the episode she doesn't rejoin the guys for like the cocktail party afterwards to be like here's to love here's to making a family here's to having crazy bunny sex none of that no it's just like she's done she's in her house now and they're in their house getting drunk like I said they've been in development for three years but apparently according to Kristen Davis because she again she's one of the producers of the show they apparently were having a very hard time casting men for the show she said that they wanted to find people who were not only age-appropriate but also you know ready to be on TV but also ready to start a family and she said also that some of them had to be convinced Christy if I were you I would want to know which of the men needed to be convinced to go on the show. Sounds important. I don't know. The premise of the show makes me uncomfortable for a lot of different reasons. Like I said at the start of this, I'm a child of divorce and I have a lot of issues and fears with commitment because of that. But I would like the chance to have a child and have the chance to be a good mother one day. Personally, I think that children should come into the conversation when you're in a relationship or married when you realize that you guys have so much love together that you want to share that with another person. So either you get a third or you have a kid. And I'm mostly kidding about the third part, mostly. It's not just like, oh, this will like, oh, we're having problems romantically. Oh, we're having problems in our day-to-day -day life. Oh, we're having financial issues. Like, let's have a kid. Your goal should be, you know, you want to love another person. The show itself is just kind of making it seem that like, who would I want to be the father of my children? And then the concept of like, I could love this person for the rest of my life. I could get married to this person. That seems secondary. Doesn't sit right with me. It makes me uncomfortable. Like, and then again, there's also the possibility that she ends up with someone that she does like and she does see as a father figure that she wants to bring into her a future child's life and they don't want to be with her for a child or they don't even want kids or they are a terrible person and she's only known them for eight weeks, you know? Like there's there's always that possibility that she's not gonna know this person that she ends up having a kid with. Christy, I'm stressed for you. I hope you find love. I hope you find a baby daddy that actually wants kids and you know, wants best for you and your future children. I need to stop talking about this because it's stressing me out. The preview for the next episode actually looked pretty entertaining. Apparently they're gonna make them all go camping and it looks like she's gonna confront the one guy who like said her name wrong. Apparently there's a snitch among them. There's always gonna be that tattletale character on these shows. They never win if that helps, but also it looks like there's gonna be a fake bear attack. So I may watch one more week, but we'll see. So that's gonna be it for this video. Did you watch Labor of Love? What'd you think of the premise? Do you remember seeing Christy on Brad Womack's season of The Bachelor? I don't remember her, but also I haven't seen Brad Womack's season since 2007. Obviously the show finished taping last year and the show's currently airing. You're probably all under NDAs, but if anyone from the show wants to like be interviewed about your experience on the show, feel free to let me know. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. They're not talking about like, oh, this could be the love of my life. This could be someone I spend the rest of my life with. They're talking about like, this could be the mother of my children. This could be the father of my children. And that's just really not sitting right with me. Aaron, Adam, Allen, Elise, Alex, Bradley, Brighton, Young, Cameron, Cameron, D, Christopher, Chris, Coldy, Colton, Crash, PC, Dean, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Feckless, George, Jaren, Griffin, A, Hopeless, Jason, Jasper, John, M, John, Jonathan, Jordan, Kenneth, Kevin, Kim, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matt, Matthew, S, Matthew, Meme Lord, The Red, Michael, J, Michael, Nathaniel, Prylock, Rob, Sam, Stefan, Timothy, Torben, Tom, Victor, Wendy, William, Zendry.